In this video, I'm going to talk about the gland's circulation on ECMO. In the gland, the superior vena cava is detached from the heart and attached to the pulmonary artery. Just like in two ventricle hearts, there are three options for cannula placement in the gland. But unlike two ventricles, or even interstage heart disease, these cannula positions have different effects, so I'm going to talk about them separately. First, neck cannulation. Blood is drained from the SVC, which is now part of the gland circuit, and is injected into the carotid and aortic arch. Because the SVC is not attached to the heart, no blood is drained from the heart at all. The heart has to continue ejecting blood returning to it from the IVC. There is really no way to get full flows, and complete cardiac support through this setup is not possible. If the heart isn't functioning, this won't work. So why would anyone do this? Children with glands can still be pretty small. So femoral cannulation may not be possible due to the small size of the femoral blood vessels. They have also had previous surgery, meaning there can be significant scar tissue in the chest, making it hard to safely get the chest open for central cannulation quickly in an emergency. So neck cannulation may be the only real option in an emergency. Neck cannulation can still partially unload the heart by taking care of the upper body circulation. So if heart function is poor but not absent, this will provide some support and give you time to come up with further support plans. Surprisingly, I've seen patients with a glent in full cardiac arrest be cannulated in their neck and survive as heart function returned with the start of ECMO. Perhaps the highly oxygenated blood heading down the aorta and into the coronary arteries was all the heart needed to get going again. How about femoral or central cannulation, which are similar in this anatomy? Now, instead of draining blood from the upper body, the cannula are only draining blood from the right atrium in the lower body. Now, it may be possible to achieve full flows in this setup because the blood from the upper body is eventually coming back to the heart after passing through the lungs and can be sucked up by the venous cannula. So you could get full ECMO flows at 100 to 120 mils per kilo per minute from this setup. But for this to work, the blood has to get through the lungs. And in the glen, flow through the lungs is passive. There's no pump involved. So pulmonary artery pressure has to be low. And if your patient is requiring ECMO, the lungs probably aren't the healthiest. Here's what a contrast injection into the glen should look like. The contrast clears and returns to the heart within a couple heartbeats. Here's an injection of contrast into a glen in a patient that is centrally cannulated. The contrast just sits in the lungs and doesn't move through. This video clip wasn't slowed down. This is a problem and will result in severe cyanosis. So what can you do if you come to work and find a setup like this? Use the lowest airway pressure you can that still keeps the lungs open lots of oxygen, and maybe even nitric oxide. Flow as high as you can, which will decrease the left atrial pressure and make it easier for the blood to return to the heart. Ultimately, a strategy of both SVC and IVC cannulation may be necessary.